We're glad you've joined us once again for part two of Revenger to Apostle, the Saul of Tarsus story, also known as Paul. In part one, we shared the account of the first Christian martyr, Stephen. His death was followed by the murderous intent of the Pharisee Saul against a religious sect called the Way. Then came Saul's life-transforming encounter with Jesus and subsequent profound defense of the gospel of salvation. We now begin part two of Revenger to Apostle. We journey with Paul as he defies conspiracies to destroy him. Here Paul present his testimony to Procurator Festus and King Agrippa. Listen now to the conclusion of Revenger to Apostle, the Saul of Tarsus story, a JMC radio theater production produced and directed by Justin Craig. Persecution arose in connection with the witness and stoning of Stephen, scattering believers to Cyprus, Phoenicia, and Antioch. Barnabas went to Tarsus to find Saul. Brother Barnabas, what are you doing here? Saul, have you heard what God is doing through the disciples? Through Peter? Miracles, Paul. And God has shown us that salvation is not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. Come, Barnabas, listen to the testimonies of the believers in Antioch. The Gentiles here are calling us Christians. When he was a Pharisee, he chose to be known by his Jewish name as Saul. Later, as he began to minister to Gentiles, he began to be called by his Roman name as Paul. For he was not only a Jew, but also had Roman citizenship. During one of their meetings, Gershon stood up and spoke to the gathering. Lucius, Barnabas, Simeon, and Manian are here in Antioch, ministering before the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit spoke to us and told us to set you, Paul, and your companion Barnabas aside for God's work. We will fast and pray and then lay our hands on you, and God will show you what to do. The Holy Spirit moved on Paul and Barnabas to have them go on their first of four missionary journeys. Barnabas and Paul traveled down to Seleucia and then sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salmis, they preached the word of the Lord in the synagogues of the Jews there. With them was John their helper. Going throughout the entire island of Paphos, they were met by a false prophet, a magician by the name of Elmas and a member of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. During Paul's speech, Elymas interrupted his message, but Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit and turned to Elymas, speaking harshly to him. Silence, you son of the evil one. You are overflowing with deceit and trickery. Why do you not stop to making twisted the straight path of the Lord. Now the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be blinded. You will not see the light of day for such a time as this. Alimus's <laughs> eyes clouded over with darkness, completely blinding him. He stumbled around, asking for someone to help him. Three years later in Philippi, there was a slave girl who had a spirit of telling fortunes. This girl was making a large amount of money for her owners by predicting the future. As Paul and his friends were going to the house of prayer, the girl saw them and stayed close to their heels. These men are prophets of the great God of heaven who are showing you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days until finally Paul became annoyed with her. He turned to the girl and spoke to the evil spirit inside her. Satan, stop tormenting this girl and be gone from her in Christ's name. With an evil shriek, the spirit left the slave, throwing her to the ground. Seeing the girl her normal self, her masters thought their fortune-telling business was ruined. So they aroused the anger of the people there and the local magistrates, and had both Paul and Silas beaten and thrown into prison. 
When they were thrown into prison, the guards fastened their feet into the stocks. About the middle of the night, while they were praying and praising God, a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. This caused the doors to open and their chains broke loose from their hands and feet. The jailer, being in a great panic, ran down to their cell block. When the noise had ceased, the jailer saw the doors wide open and thinking that they had gotten loose, he drew his sword to kill himself. No! No! They have escaped! What am I to do now? I must kill myself! Stop, jailer. Spare your life. Everyone is still here. Everybody here? Sir, what am I supposed to do now? How am I to be saved by your God? All you have to do is believe in Jesus, who rescued us. The jailer accepted Jesus and then brought Paul and Silas to his house so that they could meet the rest of his family. His family also put their faith in Christ. Then the jailer cleansed their wounds, and after that, he and his whole household were baptized by Paul and Silas. The magistrates heard about what had happened and sent soldiers to the prison to set Paul and Silas free. But Paul turned and spoke to the soldiers. They are the ones who have beaten us publicly without a trial. And me, a Roman citizen, they threw us into this prison. And now they want us to go secretly? No. Let them come to us themselves and release us. So the magistrates came and escorted them out, begging them not to come back to the city. Paul continued his travels through many cities, and he often suffered severe personal persecution, even survived being stoned. The believers were very concerned for Paul and warned him not to go to Jerusalem. A certain prophet named Agabus had a message from God for Paul. Paul, let me have your belt. Here, take it. I bind your feet and hands with your belt, Paul. This is what the Spirit of the Lord says. In this way, the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Friends, do not worry about me. I am ready not only to be bound, but even to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul eventually did end up in Jerusalem, where he and four other men purified themselves according to tradition. When they went to the temple, certain Jews incited the people against Paul and dragged him out of the temple and began beating him. The uproar they caused brought Roman soldiers who rescued Paul from the mob. The next morning, he was confronted by the chief priests and the Jewish council. But such a pandemonium resulted that the soldiers took him into protective custody. Under cover of night, the soldiers took Paul to Caesarea. The commander had a letter presented to Felix. Greetings, Governor Felix. We are delivering a man into your custody who has been threatened to be killed by the Jews. But we rescued him and have brought him to you. His accusers have contention with this man regarding Jewish law, yet nothing that warrants death or imprisonment. Do with him as you see fit. The governor told the guards to keep Paul confined in his palace. Five days later, Paul appeared in the governor's court, and the Jewish leaders accused him of many things. When they had finished testifying against him, the governor asked Paul to speak. I will make my defense then, Your Excellency. I went up to Jerusalem twelve days ago just to worship. I do profess that I worship the God of our forefathers, making it clear that I firmly believe in the law and what the prophets have written. So I will continue to keep a clear conscience before God and man. Paul continued his speech for a few more minutes. Having a good understanding of the way, Felix dismissed the Jewish leaders. Paul, when Lysias comes here, I'll decide on your case then. Felix gave orders to the centurion to continue to keep Paul under guard. 
he gave some freedom to Paul so that his friends could take care of his needs. A few days later, Felix brought his wife to hear Paul speak. At some length, Paul talked about righteousness, self-control, the judgment to come, and salvation only through faith in Jesus Christ. Felix himself became afraid. That's enough, Paul. For now, you may leave. When it is the right time, I will again send for you. Two years passed, and Felix was replaced by Porcius Festus. Since Festus wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. Several days later, King Agrippa and his sister Bernice arrived at Caesarea. When informed about Paul, King Agrippa asked to hear from him. The next day, Festus gathered commanders and prominent men of the city to hear Paul's defense. Festus opened the meeting with these words. King Agrippa and all of you assembled here. This man I place before you is the very man that the Jews want dead. Yet I have found nothing worthy of his death. Since he has appealed to Caesar, I have decided to send him to Rome. (laughs) In order to have something definite to write about this man, I place him before you, and especially in the presence of King Agrippa, that I might formulate the charges against him. King Agrippa, the prisoner is yours to examine. Begin what you have to say, Paul. I consider myself fortunate, King Agrippa, that I am about to make my defense before you. Your reputation as an expert in the customs and questions among the Jews is very valuable for what I say today. Do I have your permission to continue, King Agrippa? You may proceed. I wish to hear what you have to say. Thank you, most excellent Agrippa. My upbringing in Tarsus is well known among the Jews. How I had a solid grasp on the law and the prophets such that the highly Gamaliel chose me to be mentored by him. Accordingly, I was recognized as a Pharisee, the strictest sect of our religion. If you are a Pharisee, then why are the Jews against you? The Jews are angry because I stand firmly on the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. Our twelve tribes earnestly sought to serve God both day and night that they might gain this hope. If you and the forefathers both pursue this hope, then what problem do the Jews have with you? The hope of the resurrection of the dead is considered impossible by the Jews. I once believe the same way they do, with the approval and the commission of the elders and the council, I set out to put people of the way in prison, forcing them to blaspheme, being fiercely enraged against them, casting my vote against them when they were being put to death. Well, it sounds as if you are to be commended by the Jews rather than seeking to have you killed. With the authority from the chief priests, I set out for Damascus, accompanied by men to arrest members of this sect. But as we were heading for Damascus, about midday, suddenly a bright light from heaven surrounded me and my companions, and I was struck with blindness. All of us fell to the ground, and I heard a voice that said to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I asked, Who are you, Lord? And did this voice respond? Yes, he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. 
He told me to go into Damascus to a certain man who would pray over me. This Jesus prophesied that I would be sent to minister to the Jews and Gentiles in the name of Jesus, bringing the hope of, of the fathers to all mankind. I've shared nothing but what the prophets and Moses said was going to take place, that the Christ was to suffer and that he would rise from the dead to be a light to all people. Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you mad. I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I utter words of sober truth. The king knows these things that I speak boldly about. King Agrippa, do you trust the prophets? Of course. You believe them. Paul, in a brief moment, you could convince me to become a believer. If it is a short time or a long time, I am certain that not only you, but those here who have heard me speak would also become believers in God, other than these chains that bind me. <laughs> <laughs> the meeting was called to a close, and King Agrippa left with Festus. Festus, Paul has done nothing to deserve imprisonment or death. Yet, he has appealed to Caesar, so he must go to Rome. And so, Paul was sent to Rome. He continued corresponding with many Christians until his death. He concluded his life with the following words. I have fought a good battle. I have kept the faith. I have completed my task before God. Paul sensed that the end of his life was approaching quickly, possibly by execution under Nero. Paul's story is still being lived out today. Many are persecuted and killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. The question is this, are you willing to endure persecution for your faith in Jesus Christ? If Jesus Christ is truly your Lord and Savior and you hold fast to your faith, then you will be ready to enter the kingdom of heaven when it's your time. From Revenger to Apostle, The Saul of Tarsus Story is an original radio drama written by Justin Craig in collaboration with James Craig. This drama was directed, produced, and edited by Justin Craig. The cast includes Paul Carlson as Saul of Tarsus and the Apostle Paul, Matt Hofflin as Gamaliel and King Agrippa, Jim Rasmussen as Governor Felix, Justin Craig as Jesus and Festus, Jonathan Shaw as Rabbi Elias, Kelvin, Benji, and Lily Weiss as the Torah students, Kelvin Weiss as Boy Stephen, Joe Rasmussen as Stephen and Barnabas, Don Pickle as Caiaphas, Thursday Morning Bible Study as Mob to Stephen and Mob to Paul, Jim Lemmix as James, Robin Pearson as Ananias and Demetrius, Ryan Schilling as the jailer, Simon Peter, and guard number one. Laura Schilling as Abigail, the fortune teller. Paul Skelton as guard number two and the messenger. David Mirko as Talmai. Steve Barg as Judas. Gabe Sandoval as Gershon. Larry Anderson as Lucius. John Clausen as Agabus. And this is your host. Glenn Dunn, wishing each of you a meaningful encounter with the Lord Jesus and subsequent growth in His name.